also on Radio Biafra app. We are on tuning. We are on FM. We are on satellite. We are everywhere. And also we are on Twitter. If you go to at Martin Nam the Kano, you will be able to follow this very event. This very evening we have come here to preach the gospel of truth, the gospel of enlightenment, the gospel of hope. Because right from the onset we have remained whiter than white and whiter than snow unblemished unblemished that is why every endeavor every venture that we double into insofar as this restoration is concerned Chukukikabia has always been there to bless us and things are happening today thanks to the grace of almighty in our lives because we are clean and shall continue to be so until Biafra is restored and beyond. My name is Nande Kano. I am the leader of Indigenous People of Biafra, the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth. Those who we are born to restore Biafra, those who do not listen or pay attention to any distractions, they are focused on that very singular objective to restore the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this earth, to bring light where currently should i say presently there is a darkness all across the black world we have come to fulfill the scriptures we have come to fulfill the will of the father in heaven we have come to complete that very assignment which our eternal leader started which is to restore biafra in our time in truth and in every honesty I am the director of radio Biafra and Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of God Almighty in heaven himself, Chukukikabe Mapurumi, and in the servant of the wonderful people of Biafra, we are going to pray, and then after that, we shall discuss, we shall teach, we shall lecture, and also we shall prophesy if the Spirit leads us in that very direction. Do not forget your pen and your paper. And for those of you, I know that some of you stream this on Facebook. Stream it right across the entire platform that is Facebook. People have streamed it live on their respective private pages. You can go there to follow and to also read what each other is saying. But we must proceed. But before we do so, we must pray as it is customary for us here to do. And I shall pray in the language of heaven the oldest language on the face of this very earth, a language that Britain doesn't want to hear people speak, a very language that drives away evil spirit, the very language that ensures that you cannot deceive the people because you can deceive the people with English language, but you cannot deceive the people with the language of the ancients. We must bow our heads. Unanyana poko tutu hini habare. Unyopo nanya kanyiji we hiwisi. Unyanyi jemono. Unye sitre soso nuku wana ya. We hazie ono dunke made dendu nelo uwa. Unye nyani ino kileke na kuisi alanya. Opo nanege kambari igwe negosi walu waka ya. Opo nanege kanya wana papa ndo. No man, you be easy. Oh, banana is also kusu mile, gime libe, nefe. Oh, banana can do muzi, na jamma. Oh, banana can do kenuru abona no, na tumpo ne donala. But you need na, na se ne din sochi neke. Ayu na se na ni ge buli ge luni mono duani ni ne. Abwa ni ge hanyo wani na gabiga. I want a gatomato joining and can deal. I want a gay colonine. I want a new punine. I want a gentamonine. Only one in a china can knock a little in a carriage on a woman declare. Open an egg in a rubber easy. Nana can in a pop. I had a broken image. When I say a pop on an egg kicking in a no badrack and can then so. The Baki will make me land in Obiafa. Can hold one has to win a charity job job. The one and care bread and goes, I can see away by horn, only quite to my poor John Hanime. Quick away, like a Chinese Hanime, because you were never not watching the Bible. The one I did at my daughter, I had Chinek and Nadengosi. 
The reason why they have not proscribed any of the full and literal groups that you have tormenting all of you in the zoo is because they are part and parcel of the wider Fulani agenda to Islamize you, to conquer you, to subjugate you and turn ancestral lands into Fulani Emirates, loyal to Sokoto Caliphate. That has been their game plan from the beginning. Because I, each time we preach this very gospel, I say to some of you who are not given to reading all the time, I ask you, please, to carry out a very simple experiment. I want you to write to various governments of the world. You can pick maybe one or two governments and write to them and ask them what they think that Nigeria is in terms of religious affiliation. Ask them what sort of country is Nigeria. Is it a Christian country? Is it a country of atheists? Is it a country of enemies? Or is it a country of Islam? They will tell you that it is a country of Islam. That is what they will tell you. That is the impression they have given to them right across the world. No one outside the shores of the damnable zoological republic is aware that Muslims in Nigeria are actually a minority. Not a majority, minority. A significant minority at that. They brought all their killers and rapists and murderers, organized them efficiently under Mietiala. How they are going to enter into your territory is with their cattle. Out of a combination of idiocy and stupidness, so to speak, we allowed them to come into us. And today, everybody is struggling. I want to read out a headline only. Because everything we preach on Radio Biafra is from what they are publishing in Zoo, the one Nigeria supporting newspapers and media houses. Not from us, before they say we made it up. And sometimes when you read this very news, you cannot believe what your ears are hearing. And what I find astonishing is that I... I am tired of saying this, but uh, there is something wrong with black people. When I say they say I'm insulting them, I'm not insulting anyone, but there has to be something wrong with you. For supposedly 200 million people, let, let me say 180 million people, minus the 20 million that I believe are of full and descent, they are in a place called Nigeria, where they are controlling you. They are not original to Nigeria to start with. They came from the foothills of the Futajalon. They traveled all the way to the Zoological Republic. They took over your land from you. They took over Hausa land, you learned nothing from it. They started coming. They took Gwari land, nothing. They took the land of the Pachama, they took Birom land, they took part of Tivi land, everything. They took Canary uh, 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 land, nobody said anything. Every land in the zoo they want to occupy. And the funniest thing is that the more they take people's land, the more those who are yet to be conquered are just there looking like people who are hypnotized. Hypnotized out of stupidity and ignorance that they do nothing about their plight until it is too late. When it is too late now, they start jumping all over the place. Try to rectify it. Something that they themselves cannot do. Everybody in the zoo now is aware, this is according to a Janjaweed publication, Premium times. We brought in Fulani from Mali, from Sierra Leone, from Senegal, and all that to win 2015 election. Kawu Baraje said. And after rigging the election for them and killing on their behalf, they refused to leave. This tells you two critical things about the Fulani in Nigeria. One, Fulani doesn't have the numbers to fight. That's number one. And number two, number two, they always get other people to do their dirty work for them. Always getting other people to do their dirty work for them. The same way they're using hopeful man to do his own dirty work. Using weekend to do it. Using one hotel building idiot, a criminal that calls himself a freedom fighter to do their bidding. For them, will always use you. They claim they are in the, in the majority, but they had to go and import terrorists from across West Africa in order to regulate you. For the now late 
dead Buhari that his skeletons are in the hot desert of Saudi Arabia. All of you are aware. And what astonishes me is why is it that black people have this mentality? You sit down there. You sit down there and you do nothing. Absolutely nothing until it is too late. Until you are conquered. Until you are taken. Now you start running all over the place asking for help from all over the world. The death that they are killing today, the answer is no. Go and read the history of Benue Plateau. Read the history of the Middle Belt. You will see that the subjugation of the majority, the majority indigenous people have been ongoing from day one. Using the house of Fulani. All of you are there watching. Doing nothing. No, if you look, no, no, no. Look at the evil man is here. Look at the east. Can't you see them? Do you want Gefra to come? That was how they even deceived my Yoruba brothers and sisters. They deceived them completely. Look at as as educated as Yoruba people are. Full and Nina Chenama, Kato Rieras deceived them. Telling them that if you fight an evil man, we'll have a better life. Not knowing that they were setting up the Yoruba for conquest. Today they are in Yoruba forest, sending them on exile. Out of Yoruba land. They are refugees in 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 in, um, in the Republic. Today they are in Ondo Forest. They have refused to move. They are from abroad. Though. That was why when they said that these people killing all of us are from abroad, they knew what they were saying. Let me have some water. They knew what they were saying. This is Kawu Barajem. This man said. He has traced the, he, he traced the origin of the current insecurity in Nigeria to the influence of Fulani. He said it, it is the premium times is a Fulani newspaper. Before anybody will accuse us of bias. Do you see why Facebook doesn't want me to preach on their platform? They know we have opened the eyes of people. I got information this morning. Girls of them saying before, oh, he, he's a he's a rabble rouser. He's a this. He's a today. I am getting confirmation. A very important person called me and confessed and said that those who were against her before for supporting me, all of a sudden they are now calling her and telling her how wrong they were. These are people in Abuja, the so-called um, you know the the real hardened the flavors in Abuja. Now they are calling and saying, oh, please, uh, if you see Nam the Khan and the IPOB, you thank them. It's about time we key in, into what they're doing. We are the ones who are the fools. We've been wrong all along. They're the ones who, are, who have been right all these years. They brought in Fulani from across the Sahel to rig elections. All of you, we are watching, you did nothing. They brought in little, little kids from Niger. During the election, they brought in their cousins from the Niger Republic to come into a so-called uh, One Nigeria to come and campaign for them. They brought them from Chad, from 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 Niger, everywhere to come and vote from Northern Cameroon. All of you were just there watching as they were eating you up. You were shouting One Nigeria. They were eating you alive. You never knew the the, the idiotic mess you were in. You were busy shouting one Nigeria, shouting one like a demented idiot. Look at where you are today. Those people they brought into your land, they have refused to go. And there is one thing that, is, that I find baffling. And I want people to consider, to sit down, to think about what I have to say now, please. Think about it very carefully. Since they brought in, by their own admission, they brought in these people from across the Sahel. I am asking them. Since they brought them from across the Sahel, can somebody tell me how they came to be to be in possession of AK-47? But they were very clever. You see, very, very smart. Very smart. Britain was advising them. Britain told them that your entry route into the heartland of the South is with your capital. Don't call them. These are people they brought in for a two-league election for them. After the election, they have decided to settle them down. In order to justify their presence in your forest, they are now telling you that they are headsmen, that they belong to this, that they are personalists. Under Mietiana. 
This is how clever. They think they're clever. They never knew who will come. It's not full and never envisaged that the likes of Unam the kind will ever emerge. They never, never in a million years. They thought that you can bribe anybody. You can buy anybody. Offer him a jet, give him money, tell him, promise him good life with his family. Anywhere he wants. Promise him a house, mansion, all you well, anything he wants, give him his money. After all, you can buy any woman, you can buy them. They're very weak. You can buy all of them. <laughs> they never knew who we were. That I come from a, a, a line, I wouldn't call it through you, a line of nobility where you have noble men. Noble men that do not sell their conscience. If you knew my father, you would testify to what I'm telling you. Ask those that knew him, they will tell you who he is. Noble people, they do not compromise. Never. And then we came, or should I say, Chuku Kikabi, I'm determined that we should come at this time to save you. Not just to save Igbo people, not just to save Ibibio, not to save Efik alone, not to save a job, not to save Isoko, Urobo, Ishegiri, Ikonomikoro. No, 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 not at all. But to set free everybody trapped in the colonial enclave called Nigeria. Because as I told you two days ago, those ruling Nigeria now are not Nigerians. If I thought it's anything like, let us let us assume there is something called Nigeria that Britain created. The people in charge now are not Nigerians. They are not indigenous to the land. They do not have a home. They have no home address. If you ask me, where is your home address? They don't have. They are nomads. If you don't know the meaning of nomad or nomadic life, go and Google it or look for your dictionary. That was why Jonathan set up nomadic education. Nomads means people that wander, wandering people, they, they don't stay in one place, they keep moving all over the place. Abraham in the Bible, that begot all of us, was a nomad. Until at the time, uh, Elohim said to him, you, you should stop moving about all over the place. You have to stay in one place. But these people are still one of the few primitive tribes in the world moving their, their, their livestock from one place to another. So anywhere that comes is home. I want ethnic nationalities in Nigeria to understand the mess they are in. Some of you have no idea the type of oh, the, the state of hopelessness you're in. I am here to remind you of it. And you may not act upon it, but try to tell your children what you've heard on Radio Biafra. So in the future, as, your, as their mother is being raped or their sister abducted, they'll say, oh, daddy, uh, daddy, remember that thing you told us you had on Radio Biafra? That is why we preach this gospel the way we do. They came from Sierra Leone, from Mali, from Senegal, from Chad, because Fulani in Nigeria hasn't got the numbers to fight. The reason why Southerners have not been attacked in the North, allow me to repeat, the only reason why Southerners have not been attacked in the north is because house are poor house are peasants that the foreigners have ground into the dust if you want to see poverty go to Kano go to Kano state you see what is poverty the, this same downtrodden because Fulani is a specialist in using people they love to use people these same people they have traumatized traumatized their fathers, their grandfathers, every of their lineage going back six generations or more. The houses have just realized, courtesy of Radio Biafra, that we are no longer going to go out to kill Igbo people. We cannot wait for you anymore. And the foreigners do not have the numbers to do so. Do you know how they managed to stop tomatoes and onions from coming down these past few days? Because anywhere you have any institution you have Fulani in it, they always aspire to be at the head, to be giving orders and command. So they, they set up checkpoints where the commander of the of the that very detachment is a Fulani person. That's how they're ruling you. If all of us open our eyes tomorrow, 
to say enough is enough. Fulani will be sent packing. I'm not asking for them to be attacked of anybody. To, but they cannot be in our forest. Magadi Abama, they cannot be in our No, 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 God forbid, but they, let them fall. They cannot be in our forest. If we find them there, they are gone. And of course, some of them can testify to the goodness of the law. In that regard, if we find you in any forest in the east, you are, you are a goner. As I'm speaking, record what I'm telling you. Record it. Take it down. And send to any anybody you feel like sending it to. Our people must understand something. Those killing you are from Senegal, they are from Mali, they are from Niger, they are from Sierra Leone, they are from Chad. They came to rig elections. All of you were there when 14, not 5, when 7, 7 year olds were voting in Canada. You were there, you saw it. You saw, all of you saw it. People say, oh, well, why do you speak this way about black? I say, because black people are useless. They never act on that thing that is right. Never. Morally speaking, black people are bankrupt morally. Moral bankruptcy. All of you, including your INEC, including observers from Europe, all of you came down during the elections of, um, was it 2015? You saw kids voting in Ghana State. You came again in 20, was it 2019? You saw people, uh, little, little children voting from Niger Republic. You didn't you see them? What did you do? You said, oh, yeah, although there was rigging, we, we voted for them. APC, one last slide again. They gave money to newspapers. You see, in Africa, every layer, every layer, of life, or should I say existence, from your doctors to your lawyers, some of them, to your own, let's just say legal practitioners. We bring it down to those holding high public offices and those serving beneath them. Have you seen the level of wickedness? Do you know that a doctor who took an oath, uh, according to medical ethics, if you see somebody dying is an emergency, you must treat that very person before asking for money. As long as you have the, the, the necessary materials or tools to treat that person, you must treat them. That is medical ethics. Go, I think it's, it's medicine 101. Go to anywhere and the, the number one thing is to save life. But do you know that a doctor will know that somebody is... I'm, I'm digressing a bit because I want to tell you about the depth of what I call moral bankruptcy in the makeup, in the DNA of black people, why we are in the mess we are in today and why the Fulanese are ruling all of us. Visit us. A doctor will tell you to go and bring deposit. If you don't bring deposit that somebody will die, you think it's a joke, he'll be there. He'll be looking at somebody dying. You know, when I look at doctors in Nigeria, I, I know that, uh, you know, when I say people, people flinch. They say, hey, don't say, I know that the devil must be a black man. See, Satan must be from Africa somewhere. Lucifer. Do you know why I say that? You see a doctor watching somebody die, a pregnant woman that requires cesarean session or operation to bring out the baby. A doctor will tell the family, go and sell your land, I don't care. And the doctor will be watching and the woman will stop breathing. She will die with the baby in her stomach. There is a type of wickedness in the heart of a black man that makes you wonder <laughs> who actually met these people. After many years of considering the way we behave and the way we react, God Almighty formed IPOB and said you cannot reason like those people. For me to love you, for you people to have the freedom that I promised you, your job is not to set yourself free. Your job is to liberate the thinking capacity of an average black person all over the world. That is your job. That is the duty of Biafra. That is why I have sent you to come. I don't know if they have stopped you. Know, I think uh, we are back again. I think they stopped me very briefly there, broadcasting on my. That's what they keep doing. Try to stop us from doing 
what every him have asked us to do, but have failed and will continue to fail. Fulani came into our land because of that same thing in a black man. When you see evil happening, you keep quiet. Because the Fulanis came and took over the house and the house themselves helped them to take over other people's land. Because of that, when it came to Biafra, the only people that can defend all of you, I say without apologies, everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, without Biafra, you are gone. Without Biafra, you are finished. Fulani will take your land from you and kill you in the process. You know what they did? They ganged up against Biafra. They ganged up against anybody trying to speak the truth. They killed the Nikiwa. An honest man, the only journalist I know in, in the history of Nigeria, the only journalist I've ever known is the Nikiwa. The rest are all rubbish. You can buy it. After a while, you buy them over all of them are all rubbish. Pure bunk of rubbish. Village idiots. The Nikiwa stood on the path of the truth. Babangida killed the Nikiwa. Everybody knows this. Ben Babangida today is an elder statesman. People defer to his opinion. But he's a murderer. He's a killer. You know that Babangida is a killer. You know that very well. He killed the Legiwa. Because the Legiwa was exposing all the things they were doing. All the fraud with MPN and Fujiro. All the things, all the evil things. Even Julius Becker. Nobody will respect that man. He's in heaven, of course. They killed him. The Legio was fighting for a better life for everybody in Nigeria. They killed him. Nigerians did nothing. Nothing. That is part of that punishment that you're suffering now at the hands of these murderers from the Sahel. Do you think that God will forget? People do they, you know, they go to they, they go to all these churches and they, 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 they sing, they jump up and down. They don't even actually understand who God is or how God operates. They have no idea. Isn't it, isn't, isn't it very funny? The more churches you build, the more mosques you build, the more difficult things become. Have you not noticed it? The more churches you have, claiming you have medical centers, the more difficult things become for you. Because you are in a period of perdition. I told you in 2015 that Somalia will be better than Nigeria. I am telling you, if you have not applied for your Somalian visa, go and apply for it now. If you have not applied for your visa to Somalia, because Somalia is hello, but it's better than, it's going to be way better than the zoo. Because when you people see evil, you condone it. And that evil has come to you. Now you are about to, you are going to discover. As they say, you are about to see something you have never seen before. They came down to our land. They came down to all the way from across the Sahel to rig election in a land that doesn't belong to them. Fulani owns no land in Nigeria. They own nothing. They are visitors. They are. And all of you are there. Just coward. Just cowardly. They are afraid of them. Oh, don't, don't say something. Oh, please don't say anything. Oh, if you say something, don't say something. All of them, I'm just looking at people and laughing at you. Typical cowardly, wretched black people. You cannot stand up against people. They don't even have the numbers. They don't have... All they are doing is that they are boasting in the media because they control it. They can give money to a, a useless Yoruba newspaper editor to publish junk and write for them. That's all they rely on. If you scratch the surface, you see that they are nothing. They don't have the numbers. They don't have the strength in depth. They don't have the know-how to defeat all of us once we are united. Impossible. It is impossible to defeat. Impossible. Now, Yoruba and the Igbo are now together. Unbreakable. The bonds we forged are unbreakable. Unbreakable. The East and the West. Unbreakable. Imagine when we add middle belts to it, what is going to happen? Do you think anybody can stop us? They start begging. You know, if it's before, all of you will be done. Bring that food blockade. Bring it on. Let us see. Are they not the ones now crying and saying, our goods are perishing. Let's move food to the south. Who is begging you? Who is begging you? I'm asking. Yanjaweed, who is begging you? 
400 people are not even farmers. You, tell, you see how cunning you, you see they think they are smart. Are they farmers? The only thing that full and people do or work every day is to move cattle and to occupy political office, military, politics, and moving cattle all over the place. Who are they known to be farmers anywhere? If they are farmers, why would you have set up a nomadic school for them? Or should I say nomadic schools for them? Why would Jonathan do a thing like that? Why, I ask you. These are some of the very pertinent questions you need to mull over every blessed day to understand the hopelessness of the situation and why you must do something urgently, if not to rescue other people, but to at least rescue your family by reasoning right. Try to reason properly. That's what we're asking you to do. How can you have, should I say, 180 million people to be overrun by people who are not up to 20 million? How, how is that possible? Because all of you are cowards. They get you to fight one another. They raise idiots and traitors amongst you. And you allow them to leave. And the more you allow them to leave, they become emboldened. They give them some chicken change. They buy houses in Abuja. They are maybe in Lagos. Or they start building hotels here and there. And after a while, they now grow wings. They now think that they are opinion leaders. And they have willing allies in Yoruba media. Willing allies in Yoruba you know, sometimes I even think that some of these people, you know, they are possessed. They don't even know what they're doing. I'm telling you, they have no idea what they're doing. They are possessed. Because you cannot, Yoruba land is under occupation. Yoruba forests have, have been taken over by Fulani Janjaweed. Yet you have a Yoruba newspaper editor in Lagos, Yoruba for that matter, still trying to defend the Fulani presidency in Asorok. You know, you sometimes you, <laughs> I, I struggle to understand. You know, when I press something, I say to Elohim, Are you sure you created these people in your image? They, they said, Let's create man. You know, are you sure these black people they were made in your image? Because I have never seen such levels of stupidity ever before. The Yoruba land is under occupation, they have taken over Passover, you know, they have taken on those states. Yet, you have a Yoruba newspaper editor in punch in nation, in a uh, tribune, writing in favor of the government that have just taken over their land. Hey! Lord God have mercy. Are you following me? They came from all over the place to take your land and have taken it. You can't do nothing about it unless you support IPOB, unless you support Eastern Security Network. That is your only savior. Your only savior, morning, noon, and night. IPOB will save all of you. That was why it was very, very critical for the foreign aid. Britain told them, go and prescribe IPOB now. Do it. They said, do it now, 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 do it now. To stop them from growing. Because their influence is growing. Do you know why they demonized IPOB before all of you and the stupid, idiotic, European newspaper editors went along with it? Because that is their game plan. They always divide you. They they sow seeds of doubt in the minds of people so that you end up hating those that have come to save you. You know, that's a very subtle thing that, um, you know, Western intelligence use in Africa and it works perfectly well. In Africa, if you are a redeemer in Africa, those you are coming to save will end up hating you. They will hate you because there are some units within Western intelligence across Europe that is their job. Their job is to make sure that anybody who comes out to save the people, that the people he's trying to save will hate him or hate her. That's how we are. And the black people are very, very easy to manipulate. They manipulate them. They start hitting those that came to save them. Everybody knew that what Ujuku went to, every day I talk about Ujuku and Aburi Accord. Everybody knows that Ujuku went to Aburi Accord to go and negotiate for regionalism. For restructuring, the same restructuring they are now begging for. The same restructuring. But when they came back, nobody told Britain never allowed the people to understand what would you went for. They said, oh, he's a rebel. He's a rebel. He's a rebel. Today, you are begging for the same thing that Ojuku fought for. And over five million beer friends died for. You are still begging. And... You, you want to wait for a full man to wake up one morning and say, okay, 
Now, uh, you know, they claim they are northerners. We northerners, we are now satisfied. Come, let us uh, renegotiate Nigeria. Can you imagine such rubbish? What an insult to the entire South and Middle Belt. What an insult. What an insult. A, a few, few handful, they're not talking about 1,000 people. Depending on your, and all of you, there should be, one well, Nigeria, the unity of our country. And I, I have said it anyway, let me, allow me to repeat. You know, this, the level of stupidity I have seen in black people, believe you me, that was the reason why I said to God in heaven, in my next life, I don't want to be a black person. Because of the level of stupidity I see in an average black person. Now, do you know that today, the news broke, I put, I, I put on my Facebook page, allow me to do that, but not to broadcast. Do you know that today, the, the new president of the, of the United States of America, Joe Biden, called African leaders. They did not call whoever they claim is in Asorok. Because there is nobody there. Absolutely nobody. The foreign affairs was supposed to know that see, this man is going to make this call. And the patch is called through. Nigeria is meant to be the number one to call in Africa. Is that not correct? They called other people. They didn't call the one from Abuja in Nigeria. And I, I, you know, I, I, I said to God that you give human beings, even animals, common sense to be able to use the reason. Ask yourself, why was it that uh, Biden did not call Abuja to speak to whoever they claim is, uh, is Buhari? Because Biden knows that there is no Buhari. But it's not the job of America to tell you that. Everybody knows there is no Buhari. But it's, uh, even, if, even if you don't, even if you think that there is a Buhari in Asrock, why is it that common things, simple things that the president does, simple common things that the president can do, how come your own is not doing it? Common simple things that the president is supposed to do, how come your own is not doing it? They were burying military men that died in an air, in an air crash. Uh, a few a few meters from Asarok. And you claim Buhari is a military man, a general. And he's inside Asarok, he did not attend the funeral. All these things are raging school children being kidnapped. Common national broadcast. Common, common national broadcast. He couldn't do. Instead, you have a country where the vice president is missing, and all of you, you know this? And they are telling us that anything that Femi Adeshino says or Gaba Shegu says, considered to be the president talking. Are, are you people that stupid? Are you, no, 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 no hold on. Are you people that foolish? Uh, uh, does it mean that black people are so useless to the point that they can no longer reason properly? Even, even, and, and, and until even a rat, a rat can reason better. Do you know that the ordinary bees, and you know bees, the, 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 where you get your honey from? Even worse, do you know once the queen becomes very weak, it can no longer perform in that role. They kill the queen. They take the queen out, throw it away, and bring in another person, groom another queen to take over. Because it is called uh, not fit for purpose. You have a president, so you claim. The person cannot fulfill the duties and functions of a president. Why then do you still have that person in power? Because there is nobody in power. What Fonani did cleverly is this. They used, they dangled the promise of presidency in front of Tinubu. And the black, we black African people, being who we are, insatiable and greedy, devoid of honor, they accepted it hook, line, and sinker. Because of the promise of 2023 presidency, please do not announce that Buhari is no more. They went into their blood contract, they signed it. That is why EFCC can chase Tinubu and Tinubu can no longer talk. Because he is part of the plot. And when you tell them that Fulani can never love them, they say, oh, we are Muslim, I'm Tinubu, I'm a Muslim, they will love me. What happened to Abiola? Because you people don't know history. You don't have regard for history. Abiola was a Muslim, a very popular Yoruba politician, a successful businessman. They did not give it to him. What makes you to think 
when a group, when a presidency, the president himself have marked all of you out for destruction or those running the zoo in his name because the idiot is dead. If you doubt me, then ask Biden why he didn't call, he didn't call uh, uh, Buhari then. Because the, the, uh, my parents are dead. Am I going to call them on the phone? I still have my mother's, um, my father's number on my phone. I've not deleted them. They're still there. Although I have them, am I going to call my mom and my dad? It's not possible. Because I know they won't answer. The living don't call the dead. That's why Biden did not call for any Buhari. A so-called giant of Africa. Are, are you people not paying attention? Are you not? Does it mean that you don't listen or you don't reason or you don't? You all, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you people? I ask you. This same behavior you're putting up now is the reason why Fulani killers are in your face. But why you cannot understand that is beyond me. This same attitude, this same non giant this same attitude of oh he, he, the way he's talking because you don't like it but okay maybe you like the way that the fulani are raping your your people in the, in the bush or how did you go for your land do you like that one do you love it a very simple question the time now is 10 minutes to the top of the hour whatever you are is a live presentation i am preaching the gospel of heaven even Eli Wesleyan was in Zenith and heaven will give me a message and I pass to the living. That's my job. Heaven will give me a message and it is my duty and responsibility to pass that to those who are living. Now listen. A statement came from Asorok by Malam Garabashehu, the new president of Nigeria, him and uh, and uh, uh, they're now sharing it, which means that their, their, their end has come. Their end has come. The senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on media and publicity said there was strong suspicion that choppers were being used to ferry arms to Fulani bandits in Zafra State. Choppers, where did they get the military aircraft from? So does it mean that the radars are not working in the north? I'm saying this for the benefit of the Yoruba media uh, uh, practitioners, especially channels. I know the rest of them. You people, you are directly, I will say, you people, you are directly responsible for the mayhem that the families have brought upon everybody in this room. You are pursuing money because they were giving, APC was giving money to, to John Momo. He's dead now. All of you, your guy will tell you, hey, if you don't support them now, how are you going to get your salary? Let me ask Channel Television something. You people think we are stupid, don't you? <laughs> Channel TV. Every, every viable news network in the world survives with advertisement. Who has ever seen Channel TV advertise consistently? If you watch CNN now, after every 15 minutes, or 13 minutes, you see advert. People are paying for it. NBC is something, ABC is something, Fox News is the same, everywhere, Newsmax is the same. They survive on advertising. BBC that doesn't do advertising, they survive by, by taking money tax from, from TV license payers in the UK. And grant from the, I think it's the overseas, I think it's the, from the culture minister, culture, whatever, I don't, I'm, not, I'm no longer sure. Have you seen any adverts? How many times have you seen adverts on Channel TV? How much did they get from adverts? Now, the question is this. Where do they get their money from to pay their staff and to keep the station going? They get it from the government. That's the only way to do it. There are no license fee payers in Nigeria. People don't pay TV license in Nigeria. People are not, are not advertising. So where do you get your money from? Before that, PDP was funding AIT. Now, APC is funding Channel Television. That's why you only have two major TV stations in the zoo, essentially. The rest is, uh, is on contract. If you have something to say, you pay them and they stream it for you. You have wedding, you pay them money, they come, they stream it live. Where does Channel TV get their money from? From the government. So they must always tell the government line. And these are journalists. We are led to believe. 
Do you see how your problems are multiplying in the zoo? Even those you are relying upon to save you cannot save you. You run to your pastor, and your pastor is more interested in building the next 10 million capacity auditorium. What is happening to you? He doesn't want to know. How many of your pastors have spoken against the occupation of our forest by these aliens from the Sahel? How many, I ask you, how many? I'm sure on Sunday you go and pay your tithe and your, and your offering. Garuba Shehu, senior special assistant to Muhammad Buhari, who is now dead, of course, said that they're using army helicopters to bring arms to bandits. Full and controlled army, supplying arms and equipment to full and bandits from across the Sahel. And you're still talking about one Nigeria, as if your, your brain is not correct. <laughs> Maybe, you know, you know, sometimes I, you know, to be honest with you, so, some days I, I get so upset that I, I want to say to Elohim, allow me to ask IPOB to go to sleep. Dissolve ESL. Say to IPOB, no more activities, no more agitation, go arrest for three years. So that Fulani can come and, and reduce you with some of, some of our people who are so foolish. If not for IPOB, there will be no Nigeria. Will, what you have today is Islamic Republic of Nigeria. Islamic. They were it there. Nothing will happen. It's all that have been holding the fort, holding the line. And what did they do? They connive with, with the same people we are fighting to save, to prescribe IPOB. Illegally, of course. Do you know that today they went to court to discuss the prescription, the prescription of IPOB? Our case is an appeal court. For how many years now? 2017, 14, sorry, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, nearly four years in a country that wants to be regarded or taken seriously as a nation. For four years, somebody did you wrong, you went to court, and you've now gone to appeal, to appeal a legal decision that criminalized an entire nation. For four years, they've not had the case. Do you know what happened today? I never knew the case was coming up today. So this morning, of course, as, you, as always, I was led in the spirit and I decided to write about the prescription of IPOB using an old newspaper headline from authority that the fact that IPOB activities are not unlawful, are not unlawful, yes. Do you know what happened in Abuja today? Today was the day they were meant to hear the case of the prescription of IPOB and tagging us a terrorist group in Abuja, Federal Appeal Court of Nigeria in Abuja. Today. And what happened? As soon as they read that very publication I made, but I think I did it on, both on Facebook and on Twitter. Everybody ran away from the court today. Go and ask if you have any lawyer in Abuja. Ask them. They all ran away. The court did not sit again today because... They were hiding it, you know, before when they want to call my case, they say, oh, we have 100 witnesses willing to testify. Because they know that the tagging of IPOB as a terrorist organization is flawed, both before man and God, even in their zoo laws. They, they, they were hiding it. I don't know what told me. I don't know. Something just, I said, I wrote it, and they ran away from the court. No, the appeal court of Nigeria did not sit today in Abuja. Because there was an IPOB file in the case, in the, in the docs that were meant to be listened or heard today. This is how powerful we are. Because, because the judges, they, they assembled, seven of them, they are going through the files. Once they saw IPOB versus federal government of Nigeria, they dropped it. They said the court is now dismissed. Everybody should go. Ask some, ask some senior advocates in Abuja today, the, 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 those that went to appeal court, did the appeal court sit today or not? The, the, you know, normally when a court is not going to sit, somebody will come out and announce um, that they, is it the, the registrar or the clerk or whoever, will announce that the reason why the court won't sit. They just want everyone to run away. That IPOB file is here in the court. Ask everybody that went to appeal court today in Abuja, Wednesday, the 3rd of March, what happened? Were you given any reason why you had to run away from the court? They will tell you no. For the first time in the history of the zoo. That's how powerful we are. That is the reason why they don't want to bring that very case to come up to appeal. 
because they know you cannot prescribe people asking for a referendum is not possible. They know that during the argument, people will ask, perhaps one or two media houses will carry it, and people will ask, why have you not prescribed Mieti Allah and Fulani killers? They hastily, they didn't even adjourn it. They said that everyone should go away, and they all ran away from the court. That's how powerful we are. And that's to tell you that what Elohim is doing in our lives. God brought IPOB to save all of you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Robo, you're Yoruba, you're Tifi, you're Kanuri, you're Nupe, Jukun. It doesn't matter who you are. Bajama, it doesn't matter who you are. Iran, it doesn't matter who you are. IPOB came to save all of you. Oh, but I may, I may disagree with his style. What are that? Oh, you want the style of a full naked man raping your mother? Is that the style you, you like? Here you have your presidency. Here you have people that claim that they want one Nigeria, confirming what we've always known that Nigerian army, the foreign army generals you have in the army are the ones supplying weapons to terrorists to come and kill you and rape your mothers. And you're standing up and saying, I want the IPOB is your problem. I saw it, that, that useless daily trust newspaper in the north. That giant job with publication, writing rubbish, writing rubbish about IPOB. But when it comes to, you see how evil they are. If, when I say that black people are satanic, I know you see, when it comes to IPOB, they say IPOB attack police station, IPOB kills two policemen, IPOB kills four army officers, not allegedly. But before our eyes, you will see army come and kill people. They will say allegedly. Black people are evil. God knows in this UG, you people are very wicked, very wicked and soulless race. Very wicked. The same daily post will say allegedly. In broad daylight, the army came to my house to kill me on the 14th of September 2017. As a result of which my mom and my dad are dead today. The whole world saw it. It's on video. You know, they wrote allegedly. The army, we are alleged. But because they want to demolish full army, they came with a game plan, them and their British masters, including Obasanjo. Obasanjo is part of the problem of Nigeria. Obasanjo belongs to the Obuni fraternity, or should I say Grand Lodge, that is affiliated to the free mercenary, um, 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 not Scottish rights, the free mercenary you have in England. Obuni. That is why in the East we don't belong to groups. Ndiut, we call them. We don't belong to secret societies. There is none. Forget about Okonko is a passage of right. Okonko is a passage of right. Once you, it's like a bar mitzvah. Once you have grown to the age of 13, a guy that you give Okonko, you enter Okonko, you enter Ebe, one of the fraternities. And then you form age grade from there. That's how it's done. Obasanjo, the reason why they trust him is because he is a member of Oboni Fraternity, of course, the Grand Lodge, they call them, that is affiliated to the Freemasonry. The Fraternity in England. Go and do your research. So they trust him. England can trust him. Britain trusts him because he is their loyal slave. Oboni Fraternity and the Grand Lodge, they answer to, to um, the, 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 the Freemasons of England. Are you following me very carefully? Now, if we're Obasanjo, if Obasanjo were to come today to say that I don't want Nigeria to exist anymore, Obasanjo has the same, should I say, cloud and influence that Azikiwe enjoyed prior to independence of Nigeria. Were Obasanjo today to write and say Nigeria is dying we don't want it to continue anymore. They will dissolve Nigeria because they trust him. And some of you must know it was Obasanjo who brought SARS to Nigeria. Some of you don't know that. It was Obasanjo that brought SARS, Special anti robbery Squad. The reason why Obasanjo brought SARS into Nigeria was because in Britain then, there was a shortage of um, organs for transplant. The reason why SARS was created was ostensibly to harvest organs to send to Europe for those who are in need. Liver, kidney, pancreas, just name it. That was why Britain funded SARS. 
because then in the UK they kept complaining. We don't have much. We don't have organs here. We don't have, you know, how the waiting list is called the, the waiting list for people waiting for organ transplant ones growing and growing and growing. It was Britain that set up SARS. Their job is to harvest organs and send abroad to sell. Obasanjo was the one that made it possible. There are some things that you people don't know about these. Some things, you know, when I look at, that's why I want to look at an average ignorant Nigerian with his degrees. Or should I say degrees in idiocy? I feel sorry for you. You know nothing. Who brought SARS into Nigeria? Special anti Sport. Who brought it into Nigeria? Why is it that every year they kill, they harvest organs and they move? The same thing that they're doing at Iboko Police Station in a, in, in a boy state. It's so Idoko. Idoko is called Idoko Police Station in a boy state. Why didn't the police come and arrest somebody and take them away and nothing will happen? They, would, they took our women to court. Was it two days ago? Did you see it in any paper anywhere? Did any Nigerian newspaper or even NT or anybody go to report? That thing we've been saying that they kidnapped our women. And we are raping them. Two days ago, they brought them to court. Did anybody go to court to find out if what we've been saying is real or not? But they came to court and they were granted bail. Black people, you people are something else. In this UG, no wonder in anywhere in the world you see black people, they are the lowest of the law. You know, for very many years, I kept asking God that why? 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 Elohim said to me, one day you'll find out. And I found out myself that the wickedness of a black man is second to none in the animal kingdom. The most wicked race on earth is we black people. Very wicked and without conscience. We, we are lamenting and complaining about our women who were being raped. Some of you said it's a lie. But they took them to court two days ago. The same women they took them to court two days ago. Federal High Court in Abuja. Oh, sorry. The Wussel Zone 2 or whatever rubbish is called. They gave them bail. They came to court in chains. Amnesty International is aware. They never wrote any report. Human Rights Watch, they are aware. They never wrote any report. All the newspapers, we contacted all of them. They never came to court. Even to do their job is very difficult. That is why Elohim is punishing all of you with fallen in killers and murderers. Because your wickedness is too much. Your wickedness and hypocrisy is too much. Fulani brought in their people from across the Sahel, put them in our land and equipping them. When we told you, you said, no, it's a lie. It's propaganda. It's incendiary. Look at NBC saying they will uh, homo, co -co, or Twitter, cockroaches saying they will, they will block Radio Piafra. If people who are sensible who are not able to do that, it is a bunch of corrupt idiots in Abuja. They said it's incendiary. He's a, he's a whipping up ethnic sentiment. But your presidency, Gariba Shehu, has just confirmed what I've been saying for years. That the Nigerian army have been supplying Fulani terrorists for some time now. That is why in Zamfara, there is a no-fly zone. Before you bring arms to terrorists with a helicopter, there must be a heavy-duty aircraft that must have brought it in the first place where the helicopter got those so who brought those arms into Nigeria? Who contracted or who hired a helicopter to be flying them to... How come they don't even know where they are? Yet they come to Olu to bomb Olu. And some of the fools are busy hailing, hailing people coming to kill. Oh dear me. Sometimes I don't... I feel like not preaching, to be honest with you. I say, let the will of the Almighty be done because we are, we are honestly speaking, uh, something is wrong with us. Something is wrong with us. It's very, very terrible indeed. The helicopters are everywhere. Garaba Shehu told BBC Hausa that a no fly zone was imposed on Zafra because of reports that jets, jets are used to ferry arms to bandits. So, bandits, you claim. They are hungry. They are not kidding. How come they negotiated arms deal all over the world? They hired an aircraft to come and drop the weapons for them. And all of you say, uh, we, we Nigerians, tomorrow morning I hear them, we Nigerians, we are in Nigeria together, the unity of our country and the patriots. <laughs> anyway, whom the gods want to destroy, they first make them mad. 
Nigerians are mad. And that is why foreign people are in your forest killing you. People are so hopeless. So idiotic. So foolish. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know what Luca did to some of you, to did to the brains of your parents, because um, I, I don't know, uh, to, honestly speaking, once you're in Nigeria, I don't, see, I don't see you as a human being. I'm being honest with you. I do not see you as a human being. And that is why I commend those soldiers who are leaving the zoo. How can me see sometimes I wonder how can you come from the middle belt and you are in the army? From the east, you are from, you are in the army. From the west, you are in the army. The same army that instead of getting these bandits they brought from Sierra Leone, from Mali, from all these places to go and fight Boko Haram, they use you to go and fight Boko Haram. And after fighting them, the same Nigeria you claim you're serving, uh, some of their idiots like Sheikh Gumi, or uh, should I say Abubakar Gumi, not she's not a Sheikh, only, only an Arab man can be a Sheikh. Uh, Abubakar Gumi will come out and say, um, my dear brothers, my dear bandit brothers, uh, people you should be upset with is the Christian soldiers killing you with Nigerian army uniform. These are people serving uh, supposedly their nation. Somebody endorsed by the presidency because Lai Mohammed said that he is in support of what Sheikh Gumi is saying. So that means that Lai Mohammed is in support of Sheikh Gumi. I keep calling him Sheikh. This that's dirty, filthy looking thing. If the, in, what Lai Mohammed says is that I support what Abu Bakr Gumi is doing with the bandits, which means that the federal government of Nigeria is in support of uh, Abu Bakr Gumi, in the, the new minister for for banditry. And kidnapping. And this same representative of Nigerian government said that it is Christian soldiers killing Muslims. And you are still wearing the army uniform of Nigeria. And you are fighting who? Who are you fighting? Why can't all of you live tomorrow morning? What are you doing there? That is the reason I keep castigating black people. Are you that foolish that you cannot reason? You are in, in, in Sambisa forest fighting. Your village, your ancestral forest is being occupied by the same people they claim that you're fighting. Are you normal? Are you your brain? Okay. At all? Everybody must leave the army and the police. If you stay there, you will die. Especially those in Biafra land, you will, uh, God knows you will die. I'm telling you the truth. You will, uh, uh, well, I said it before. You will kill us. Many years you will kill us. Then after that, we'll kill you. And then shortly after that, the affair will come. I've been saying it from day one. They will kill us. We'll kill them. In the end, the affair will come. Without apologies, no idiot. I'm not apologizing. Remember when they used to kill us? They will, will come and be writing new long gram. And, and of course, myself, one of them. We are placing the world on notice for many years. After a while, when we write the job straight away, is it not that IPOB, that uh, toothless bulldog, they just straight away? And we kept, you know, we went into prayer fasting. And we kept saying to the dead, please avenge your death. We prayed to Elohim. Of course, we cannot pray to the spirit of the dead. It's not good. It's idolatry. We, we kept saying to Elohim, avenge you. You are a God of vengeance. Avenge your children. Fight our battles for us. We, we, as we were praying and fasting and asking God to fight our battles, from nowhere unknown gunmen came on. We don't know who they are. Like as if they are angels from heaven. And they are not fighting our battles for us. He said, all those policemen and women and army that killed our people, we don't know where these angels came from. They are called unknown gunmen. Eh? They are doing a very marvelous job now, avenging the death of their people. They want the police and the army to understand when you lose somebody, how painful it is. Because if you leave them, they will massacre everybody. They will kill. They have no soul. Nigeria army, Nigeria police, they have no soul. These are full and they are led by full and they have no soul. They are evil to the core, to the bottom part. You know, he's a miracle working God. I don't know where he sent the unknown government. I don't know. The, the, uh, people name them unknown government. That, that's how we know them by. And uh, believe me, they're doing a very marvelous job. And I will pray more. I will fast more for many more to come. 
These people, they go to uh, any, they slaughter you with a right letter. <laughs> they will, in fact, once the letter comes, they put it in the, in the dustbin. We said, okay, is that how it's done? Okay. We went, we went into, into prayer and fasting. We kept praying until, should I say, God answered our prayers with unknown gunmen. We don't know who they are, but I believe they are angels from heaven. They are the armies of heaven. And they are now the ones avenging for us. So all those police stations that they used to torture people and kill people and harvest their organs, uh, please, uh, unknown government, find them all. Look for them and find them. Find all those police stations. If you know you are a police officer, you are involved in organ harvesting. People will disappear. Oh, things have happened. Though. People just disappear. Parents will know where the children are. You hear mothers lamenting as they are dying. They are saying, oh, we are these chibos on one. Give a on, have you seen Chibuzo? You don't know that SARS have killed Chibuzo. The woman will be lamenting until she passes from unconsciousness into, into death. Thinking about the son, sometimes only son, killed by the police. And now God answered uh, the prayers of people. I don't, I don't know where this is unknown government, I don't know where they are from. But at least if they are keeping the police busy, the police will have to be killing innocent people. Arresting you know, the what I they go they arrest innocent people. They oh, oh Nigeria shouldn't exist. I get Nigeria with the passion. Shouldn't exist, honestly speaking. Only a fool will support one zoo. Damn Nepal zoological world republic. Soldiers are living and they're taking them to court. The Nigerian army has ordered the immediate arrest of officers accused of deserting their post. Can you imagine such, such rubbish? You go behind the back, you keep Boko Haram to fight people. And uh, uh, when people who have now discovered, suddenly they have now discovered that they have been the fool for years. They have left your useless army. They're saying, go and arrest them. I, I, I don't talk, God. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, zoo, zoological Republic. Damnable Zoological Republic. Military documents obtained by various newspapers have now listed 101 names, ranks, and, and bank details of Iran soldiers. Every soldier should leave. Go and join the Eastern Security Network. Go and join them. They are the future. If you don't know how an army is supposed to behave, go and look at the Russian Revolution. I think of 1989 or 1990 or 91, I don't know. When Boris Yosin came into power. The, the apparatchiks of the, the old guard of the Communist Party in Soviet Union ordered the tanks and armor personnel carriers onto the streets of Moscow to go and kill people. When the army got there, they looked at their fellow citizens, they said, we cannot open fire on these people. That is how a patriotic army behaves during the zoo. They bring in wild Fulani beasts. I'm a man. Wild beasts. Give them AK-47 and open fire. All of you saw the video of live shooting. It's like a, it's like a turkey shoot in Abuja of this, this, this same army slaughtering innocent Shia protesters. All of you saw the video. That video did not make it onto any major news network around the world. That was the day I became afraid of what Britain was doing. The video is everywhere. In any other country or any other country of the world, there would have been an uproar. But in the zoo, nothing happened. Nothing you can kill. You know, about the years, army will come. Uh, bloody civilian, they open fire. Uh, not anymore. We now have God in his infinite mercy have sent us guardian angels. They are known as unknown, unknown gunmen. They are the ones defending us now. We don't know who they are. They are the ones defending the people. They are unknown gunmen. We don't know who they are. And may God bless them. Because as they are keeping the police and the army busy, they won't have time to kill innocent civilians. They cannot. Because if you kill and go back to your barracks, uh, these angels will come on. They are, known, they are called a non government. They will come and they will avenge the death of innocent. You can never go scot free. It doesn't matter where you want, you can never go scot free. This your nonsense in the zoo has been going on for years. You have the 